Good evening, everybody. Hope this finds us all doing really well. We're up to part 29 of the marriage covenant. And last uh, week we looked at part 28, which was finances. And we're going to continue on this theme of finances because this is a really big area in a relationship where we can have a lot of issues if we're not equally yoked and on the same page. And one of the most common questions that I've been asked and will probably continue to get asked is how much do you give and who determines how much you are to give? So how much do you give and who determines how much we are to give? And once again, like everything else, these become matters of the heart. Everything is a matter of life or death. It's not just a matter of applying the principle or applying the rule or the guideline. It's about whether we are in the life of what God is asking us to do. And we're going to look at that as well. And so we looked at last week, the woman, or in part 28, the woman who gave all she had to live on as the heart posture that we would want to have within us. She gave her two coins. She gave out of her poverty, not her surplus. And Jesus observed that and made a statement around that. And that is the heartbeat that we would want to come from. Many will look to the rule or the principle to determine how much they should give as opposed to our relationship with Jesus Christ. Let me say that again. Many people look to the rule, they look to the principle, they look to the text as opposed to our relationship with Jesus Christ. We are to do all things, everything we do, everything we're becoming, is to come out of our intimate fellowship with Jesus Christ by faith as the new covenant instructs. We're not just to do things because it says to do things. Every single thing that we do, including giving in financial areas, is to come from our relationship, our intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. And so this is really important because anything less than this is really to miss the mark, which is sin. And so in turn, although one may apply the rule or the principle to their life, they are not in the life of the act of giving. And God wants us in life. That's his primary purpose is that we are in life and then out of life, we end up giving, living, serving, etc., etc. So the one who is giving from their relationship with Jesus by faith will find these next 10 attitudes present within their very being and then growing, forming, and developing in their very being. The first one, this attitude from having a relationship with Jesus by faith will be considering giving a blessing. So this person, this attitude considers giving an absolute blessing, privilege, and honor. The second attitude is this, says we get to give as opposed to we have to give or we ought to give. The third attitude gives from the all posture, not a percentage-based posture. It gives from the all posture. The fourth attitude is it always looks first to give and bless others. It knows it is better to give than to receive. The fifth attitude, it always looks for opportunities uh, to give and bless others. So it's always looking to first, but it's always looking for opportunities now to give and to bless others. Number six it gives beyond what's required or asked for. So this this attitude from a relationship, not a principle or a rule, always gives beyond what's required or asked for. Number seven, has generosity as a state of its being. Has generosity as a state of its being. Number eight, attitude never fails to give. So it never fails to give. Number nine, is generous in 
every area of life, not just in the area of finances. And number 10, puts others' needs ahead of its own. This attitude always puts others' needs ahead of its own. So the one who has the giving uh, out of principle or the rule will find these attitudes present in their very being. The attitude considers giving a hardship and a necessary evil. This attitude considers giving a hardship and a necessary evil. Number two, considers giving something we should do or we ought to do because the book says so. Third attitude is focused on the amount or the percentage given, i.e. is it 10%, is it 5%, how much do you give as opposed to all. Number four is very rarely first to give and waits to be blessed. Is very rarely first to give and waits, holds back before they give. Are you first in line to buy the coffee for your friend or do you wait to see if they do it first or don't even offer? Number five is consumed in self and self-interest. This attitude is consumed in self and self-interest. Gives the minimum and even looks to give less if it can. Number seven is mean-spirited at its core of being. The eighth attitude it isn't even looking for opportunities to give. This person that keeps to the rule uh, or to the guideline is is always never looking for opportunities to give. Number nine is mean in every area of life unless there is some gain to be gotten for itself. And 10, always sets self and self-interest first. And we may have had that before as well. So God desires us guys to be in life and not just a form of obedience because a form of obedience not motivated by love can harden our heart and create a hardness of heart. He doesn't desire obedience for obedience sake. He desires life and from life comes the expression of life, our obedience through our actions. This is where keeping the commandments and instructions in all aspects of life, no matter what it looks like, becomes an absolute blessing, an absolute joy and an absolute Honor. It becomes a privilege to be able to live out God's will. It's not hard, even though you might face different things. It's an absolute blessing and a joy. And that's why it says rejoice in your sufferings or your tribulations, because you know you're doing the will of God, which is a real honor. It is from this posture of heart to which we are to give our finances from. So it is from a relationship with Jesus by faith, that posture of heart to which we are to give our finances from. The obedience of the giving of our finances through our relationship with Jesus is to be motivated from love and activated through faith. Our obedience which comes through our relationship with Jesus is to be motivated by love or from love and activated through faith. None of it is to be seen as something that we have to do or we ought to do or something we should do begrudgingly. In fact, the opposite is the case. We can't wait to be able to participate in what the Father asks of us whenever He asks, all of the time and at any time. It's what we were created for, guys. And so this whole area becomes such a blessing, such a joy, and a releasing of freedom on the inside of us. And it's amazing how, it's, how enjoyable it is to bless others in this area of finance and to give. So just so we are clear, if you are not yet in this posture of giving within your relationship with Jesus, then I'm not saying you don't have to give until you are in this posture or that in fact you should stop giving. What I am saying is that it's not about uh, starting in a, and waiting for something to happen. I would say if you're not yet in this, give a tenth of what you 
no to give and watch God start blessing that seed you have sown. So what I am saying is this, that this ultimate position to discover through your relationship with Jesus, and I strongly urge you to search this dimension out in Him with all you have until the Spirit brings you into this dimension through the revelation of His Word in you. So keep giving, but seek this greater reality in Jesus Christ. Remember God's intent with everything He does is to bring us into life and life abundant within us from being in Him. It is not that we would just be found doing things for Him. So how much are we to give? We are to give all from the life of Christ which is being formed in us through our relationship with our Messiah. So some questions to grapple with. Why is it essential we give from this position of life and not from the position of I should or I ought to? Which attitude from above do you relate to more and why in the area of giving? Three, why can being obedient to a rule or a principle harden your heart? Four, why is the act of giving not a sign you actually have? Why is the act of giving not a sign you actually have the spirit of generosity operating in you? So just because you give doesn't mean you have the spirit of generosity in you. Why is that? And why is this position of giving of life the ultimate position to enter into and live from? I'll see you for part 30. Uh, 30. Take care.